Hello. I posted recently on social media about how people with an avoidant attachment are often magnets for people with coercive or anxious attachments. And I want to explain a little bit about how and why that happens. So the first thing to be aware is that people who have an anxious attachment very often have had an avoidant parental caregiver. People who have an avoidant attachment often have had an anxious or coercive parental caregiver. And so that means that type of attachment is very familiar to us and therefore we are drawn to people in our adult life who have similar attachments to those of our parents because we know how to handle it. Unfortunately, because we've grown, because we've learned things, because they're not the same people and because we're not children anymore, those attachments can often over time become dysfunctional. Now, sometimes they're not. Sometimes people can be a perfect fit with their just, you know, insecure attachment and actually be okay. And sometimes those people together, depending on what type of attachment they have in the avoidant and the coercive, may actually start to earn a balanced attachment or a secure attachment together because they're able to open up, be consistent, be predictable, create security in their relationship together. But some of the issues that arise when we have people with avoidant and coercive attachments in relationship is how we navigate conflict and difficulty. So a person who is avoidant is inhibiting and suppressing their negative emotions so that they focus on other people and managing other people's emotions around them. The coercive person is overwhelmed by their emotions and so they are constantly seeking for their needs to be met externally because they don't feel that they can meet them themselves and because the people in their life were unpredictable in the way that they responded. So an A person is trying to keep everybody happy all the time. So if you think of the avoidant A person, when their child gets upset, they find that too much to deal with because it might make them feel like they're a bad parent or feel ashamed or feel overwhelmed. They want to push those feelings down. So what they will do is they will start to fuss over their child. They may be too much, you know, so checking with them, you know, do they need to be changed? Do they need to be hugged? Do they, do they need to be fed or whatever the case may be? That child may not be getting its needs met. And if this happens a lot, obviously, you know, we often make those mistakes, but if it happens a lot, that child then may realize I can't get my needs met. But if I'm upset or if I'm angry or if I cry or if I misbehave, I get a response from this person. Remember, this person is avoidant, which means that they will often be a little bit distant a lot of the time, but they get a response because of that need to care give that type A's have. And so then they learn, if I'm very emotional, the people around me respond. Unfortunately, they often respond not in the way that you need. And that means then that person can display coercive behaviors of being angry or feigning helplessness, which forces the person then to look after them because that person seems like they can't look after themselves. And really what's happening is that person is needing something from the other person. It may be needing validation. It may be needing to feel safe, feeling that that person is not going to disappear or abandon them. And because of that, then they will, you know, maintain these kind of behaviors, trying to get the person to come to them, but not recognize that there is actually a need that needs to be voiced in that. And they're not very good at being able to put their feelings into words and express them and be able to think, well, what is it that I'm actually feeling? You know, when my partner goes out with their friends for a night and I start frantically texting them and, you know, you know, connecting with them, Am I recognizing that it's my fear of abandonment that's actually causing me to do that? Or am I thinking they don't care about me, they don't love me, they're gone out with their friends and I'm not important? Because one is the feeling and the other is recognizing the need. The need is I need to feel reassured. I need that person to say something or do something that lets me know that our relationship is safe so I don't feel threatened. And until that person can voice that, those problems will continually arise. Now on the other side, the person who is the type A avoidant pattern, they will often be more 
withdrawn some of the time or they will be in people-pleasing mode because they're trying to protect themselves from feeling unpleasant feelings. Now the reason that occurs is that if they have a coercive or anxiously attached parent, that parent has big emotions, lots of big emotions. And because they have big emotions, very often the person feels I can't have emotions here because I have to make sure this person is okay. Think about it, if you have a parent who gets very, very upset or very, very angry or seems very distressed, you as a child will think, I don't want them to do that because when they do that, I get scared or I feel vulnerable. And so I, what I need to do is I need to push down my own feelings and acknowledge theirs. And so that person becomes consistently unavailable to that child, usually on an emotional level, because they're not able to be aware of the child's needs because their own needs seem so, so prevalent and so powerful. And so the child then learns, keep my feelings down. And so what happens then is that when they're in relationships and the, they're with somebody who's, who's got a coercive or a t attachment, what happens is when that person gets upset, the feeling of it's my fault or I've caused it or I'm ashamed because there's something wrong with me means that they will try and appease that person and try and calm that person down rather than face the feelings that they have themselves. But eventually they might start to feel a little bit invisible or feel unrecognized. And then what happens is they often get burnt out or get fed up and then they explode with emotion. And the people around them are going, whoa, where did that come from? Why are you reacting like that? And then they can get gaslit by the coercive person who says, you're making a big deal out of this. I don't know why this is such a big deal. You were fine yesterday. Why are you, you know, exploding at me today? And it's because they've been pushing it down for so long, like a pressure cooker, that they can't hold it anymore. And then it explodes out. And to the other person, it seems like it's totally out of the blue. Where did that come from? But in actual fact, they don't realize that this person has been suppressing that for quite a while. And when it explodes out of them, it's because they just can't hold it in anymore. And then the conflict arises again because now this person feels overwhelmed with their emotions. So the coercive person feels overwhelmed with their emotion. The avoidant person, the type A person feels ashamed and then they think I have to push down my emotions again because I've shown my emotions and now I feel ashamed for showing those emotions because this other person's emotions are more important than mine because they need me or they need my help because they're not okay and I have to help them or I have to fix them. And so the dynamic continues all of the time. Now what changes it if, is one, if the person who's got the type C coercive attachment recognizes that they need to start to consider what are they actually needing, what are they actually afraid of, and learn to express that clearly to the other person whilst listening and being able to take the other person's perspective. The person who has the type A avoidant pattern needs to learn to feel their feelings and to recognize that when they're trying to keep everybody happy, they're doing it because there's feelings there of maybe not feeling good enough or feeling like there's something wrong with you or that you're not a good person or being afraid you'll hurt people because these are all feelings that were there in the past. When you start to recognize that, then you can begin to express your needs and realize, well, actually, I do need certain things in this relationship. Now, type A people are very good at talking about this, but they don't show the emotion, which means the other person then feels like they're emotionally unavailable because they seem maybe cold or distant. But when you tap into that feeling, then it's about expressing that feeling in a genuine way by actually really feeling it and expressing it in the moment, but recognizing that when we express an emotion, an emotion needs to have a need attached to it. I am angry, I need this. I am sad, I need this. I am happy and I need this. So that we express that. And when we get in the habit of doing that, people know where they stand with us. They become secure in the relationship with us because they say, well, when this happens, that person tells me what they need and I just have to do that for our relationship to work. Or it may be a case of saying, well, I can't do that for our relationship to work. And for that person then recognizing, well, I have a need. I need to get that need met somewhere else. Very often, it might be just simply yourself being able to say, well, actually, I need to be able to look after myself. I need to be able to ground myself. I need to feel safe within myself and trust myself. 
I need to accept and love myself. So the coercive person might need to trust that they can be safe alone. And the avoidant person needs to recognize that they can trust other people and that they can be safe with other people and also recognize that there isn't anything wrong with them and be able to believe that they have value and accept themselves. When we start to do that, then our relationships immediately start to improve. They will never improve unless you are very clear in expressing your needs to the other person and unless you are predictable in the way that you engage with them. So that if there is emotion that's there and you're, you're avoiding it, that you learn, actually, I need to share this emotion with the people around me. Otherwise, when I do, they won't know what's happening. And the person who's filled with emotion, who's the type C person, needs to be aware that maybe my emotions are not actually as valid as I think they are because I'm not actually looking at the whole situation or being objective or seeing things from the other person's perspective. Maybe my fear of being abandoned is not actually in the present. It's actually coming from the past. And so when that person recognizes that the feeling was valid at one point in time, but at this point in time in the present, it may not be as valid. And that needs to be brought into their awareness so that they can start to express to the people around them, well, this is what I need from you so that I can feel safe. Because ultimately, that's what we're trying to do. We want to feel safe. We want to feel free from danger. And we want to feel that we can actually connect with people to procreate, to have you know, intimate relationships to experience love. And so becoming balanced comes through awareness. It comes through acknowledging and admitting and recognizing the patterns that we're using and then looking to see, well, what is the opposite of what I'm currently doing? So the person who's not experiencing their emotions needs to experience their emotions. And the person who is caught in their emotions and not using their cognition and their reason and thinking need to focus on reason, thinking and objectivity. If you have any questions, please post them below. I'm more than happy to answer them.